than the Suwannee Valley. But we did see that early rain cycle kind of ramp up and then begin to stabilize the atmosphere for the evening. So your Friday night plans, limited effects from any kind of future rain activity aside from the lower mid Suwannee Valley. Some of the upper clouds from that disturbance now pushing its way across the Bahamas and even into southern Florida where we do get that more east wind effect. But for us, we're not really on the fringe of that quite yet. What we will see this evening is a gradual decrease in the cloudiness. Variably clear is what I'll call it. You can have a few hours of clearness while maybe a few counties away, some patches of clouds are still lingering. By sunrise, sun and cloud mix is expected. Could have a few of those morning showers, but enough heating through the breaking sunshine through those clouds that can allow the sea breeze to pop. We'll get a few more of those showers and storms forming in that fashion, as well as a front that will start to slow down across the Chattahoochee River that destabilizes, weakens the atmosphere in southwest Georgia. So that can be a prime zone for scattered to numerous showers and storms for your Saturday afternoon. And just like the last few days, individual showers and storms can kind of clash with their outflow winds and maybe cause some downpours that could dump a pretty decent amount of rain in a localized area. And well, those downpours, they can produce one to two inches. We've seen it several times already this week and it could happen again for tomorrow and this is not including any effects from the future tropical depression as it rides to the north across the eastern gulf more than likely paralleling the west coast of florida into sunday and monday that's when we can have the greatest effects and depending on this projection the effects overall are not going to be all that hard hitting especially in the tri-state region generally speaking a northeast to north winds so that's an offshore flow wind speeds will likely be out side of the peak circulation so we can see occasional breezes and the heaviest of the rain will be around and east of the center of the circulation. So with all that said, based on this eastward projection, our wind speeds are not expected to be incredibly impactful. We can certainly have some gusts, particularly in those marine areas, but the overall forecast shows an east wind pattern through early Sunday becoming more northerly. So that reduces the effect of a storm surge for the eastern shores of the big bend and our wind gust potential can be maybe upwards of 30 miles per hour. That's not set in stone. A little westward jaw could increase the, uh, the expectations a bit, but there's reasonable confidence in this solution where the heaviest rain will be in the peninsula um, and around and east of I-75 in particular. The more west you go, the less likely you'll have any kind of substantial breezes or even rain for that matter. So what you should take forward from this for the rest of the evening. That is going to continue to be slow in its strengthening mode, but locally speaking, Sunday night and into Monday, that's when south and eastern areas in particular can have some rainy and even occasionally squally, breezy conditions. So our high temperatures, they'll, they'll be different depending on where you are. Western areas could be warmer than 92, while eastern and southern areas could be a bit lower. But as the future Debbie moves away from us, we get a drier west wind that heats things up and really reduces our rain chances.